Hi folks, it's me, Ali, coming to you from uh, the beautiful Acropolis right here in Athens. Uh, you know, Athens is a center of civilization, of history, uh, of a wonderful tradition of science and philosophy. And I'm here visiting and, uh, you know, right now there's been a bunch of questions that were sent to me regarding a new article uh, about um, <laughs> flossing, believe it or not, is uh, beyond a question now whether it's important or not. And I figured while I'm here, I'll just make a little video to uh, uh, reply to this uh, interesting headline that has been uh, going on in New York Times and a few different uh, news outlets while showing you guys this beautiful Acropolis area of Athens. It's going to kill two birds with one stone. So let's go take a quick look around and see what we have. So much of the columns of this little um, uh, structure here, that, that few are missing in the endodontic research. Uh, what's happening is that we lack a uh, robust number uh, in the type of science that is done in medicine in terms of the, the, the strength of the study and the power of the study statistical. Okay, I'm very sorry, but there was so much background noise from the wind and these annoying little insects called cicadas that I'm going to have to intervene here and do a little voiceover for everything I said. So I'll just reiterate what I said on the beautiful Acropolis while you watch the footage. Basically, the new piece that was put out by the Associated Press questioned the validity of research on flossing. This piece is to a dentist is like questioning the validity of soap for washing your hands. To make a long story short, I can tell you that the articles by Van der Wieden and the other periodontists on this subject focused on gingivitis and plaque removal, and the longest studies in this group were less than a year. So this is ludicrous because as an endodontist, I'm recommending flossing not to reduce gingivitis, but to reduce the rate of interproximal decay, which is a major cause of root canal infection and doesn't happen in a year, but a slow process that could take up to many decades. Now, let's just say that it's like the benefits of a healthy diet. Yes, you won't die from one meal full of Twinkies laced with high sugar and preservatives and deficient in all nutrients and vitamins. But over the years of having the same poor diet, I think we all agree that you'll be worse off than having a healthy balanced diet. Of course, until you hit a bus. So, Van der Wieden, who apparently hates flossing, goes on to say that he prefers a toothpick to flossing because of the convenience. Well, that's great. The only problem is that there's no research showing that a toothpick is better than flossing. So, thank you, Mr. Evidence, for your recommendation. Look, this issue of lack of evidence for many things is really a cop-out to do the right thing. After all, there's very little scientific evidence for many common sense solutions that we have. For example, there is no controlled scientific studies to prove that wearing a parachute will actually reduce the rate of mortality while jumping out of a plane. It's just common sense. No one will take the example of this guy and try to make the point that you don't need a parachute, right? Now, the more important point is this. Can some people get away without flossing? Yes. Is some people's interproximal contacts open enough to allow toothbrushing to replace flossing? Yes. Do we know who these people are in advance and can we reliably pick them out of a population? No, we can't do that. And this is the problem. We take something that may apply to some people and make a recommendation to all people. And as a result, many people are contaminated with this bad information and pay the price of this bad advice. Yes, as an endodontist, it would be an economically favorable recommendation to say, don't floss. But as a conscientious human being in a patient-centered practice, I can't imagine doing that. So, do you have to floss all your teeth? Yes, but if you're really in a pinch or are too lazy to floss, only floss the teeth that you want to keep. In conclusion, as I'm coming down the Acropolis, having a, a beautiful visit up here, uh, basically, I would floss like my life depended on it. I would continue to floss and I would ignore this kind of research and articles that are basically meant primarily for clickbait and having uh, cre creating confusion. And I would continue to follow the mainstream uh, dental advice of brushing and flossing. And as I always say to my patients, uh, flossing is in fact more important than brushing because uh, brushing cleans the uh, self-cleaning surface of your teeth, but flossing cleans those surfaces that your tongue cannot get to. This is the right advice in my opinion. And uh, for real, then I'm Ali Nessa and I hope this little information was helpful to you.